How you doing? Fine, thanks. I'm my lonesome today. Oh no. <laughs> you have to take notes for everybody else then. <laughs> uh, you'll probably have noticed that it's going to be quite a short one today. Yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, we'll go through uh, presentation queue because uh, I would have maybe done a bit more, but uh, I'm going to China on Friday. So I'm like over the head with uh, stuff to do. So uh, it'll be a nice sweet short shift for you. That's fine. Now, how, how are you getting on with uh, your coursework and stuff? Is it all okay? Uh, yeah, don't seem to have uh, run into any major problems. I've got relevant information and yeah. I'm sort of, sort of jotting down notes before I go to... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, but you're not up against a brick wall or anything like that? No, I don't see anything major. Okay, good man. Why does it just come with control work? It, just, it doesn't work. <clears throat> Might be all up, just so, so people stop messing with me. Yeah. Top of my head's cut off. We're just going to be a few minutes while we'll get this uh, other machine um, sorted out here, okay? Yeah, no worries. Okay. Right then, we're all ready to, to go for it. Okay, well, uh, oh, I meant to ask you, did you have a look at the uh, FMEA stuff on uh, Blackboard? Yes, I did. Some of the questions, were you, were you okay with that? Yeah, everything seems pretty clear. Yeah, yeah good, good. I, th I thought it was easier to do it via examples than try and... Uh, kind of work it out from what was on the the overheads, you know? Yeah. So long as you, uh, if you're okay with that, then I'm okay with that. Because everybody yeah. here seems to be okay with that, so everybody's happy. Yeah, no major right. issues. Ah, okay, right, good. Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about human factors and how stupid some people can be uh, in getting themselves killed for practically no reason whatsoever. So... Uh, how reliable are humans? Well, it 
Depends who you're really talking about. I think there could be as many answers to that as there are people on the planet. Uh, well, how could you uh, how could you measure it? Well, what is their failure rate? Uh, and how can you assure how can you assure maximum reliability? What are the signals of human failure, and what alarms can you give? Well. Okay, so in a lot of accidents, um, human contribution has been quite significant and negative. And I can speak to that from uh, uh, personal um, experience, where people have done exceptionally stupid things just to get away five minutes early from work or have an easy time and stuff like that, and then they've got a really easy time because they've ended up dead. So, you know... No, they're not going to be tired anymore. <laughs> so then, um, at Three Mile Island, a routine fear of a feed pump was uh, was enhanced, shall we say, uh, into a major accident by human factors. And catastrophe was uh, averted only by good uh, reactor uh, design, apparently. Right, uh, the second link on this uh, uh, slide doesn't work. Okay, so it will depend on personnel, uh, performance, depends on the people who you've got there. Uh, obviously, uh, like for me, for example, as a, a, a swimming in the British Olympics is not very good because I can't swim. So it would be kind of pointless to select me for that. Also depends on training, procedures, uh, your supervisor, and uh, if you've got any redundancy in the system in case you do have a failure. I always find, um, or I've found over the years, that uh, having a good supervisor is, is key to how well I tend to, to, to do. Um, if I don't have what I term a good supervisor, then it all kind of falls apart and it's not good. Okay, so what about us then? Why are we brilliant? Well, we've got the ability to learn. Uh, certain people have the correct attitude towards working their job. Other people have the wrong attitude. We, we could uh, interact with others. And we've got reactions under stress, whether we're either good or not good. Uh, and uh, uh, we have an attitude to risk-taking and to safety. Well, like I said, some people that I know have taken risks for, like I said, what I would regard to be stupid reasons and they're dead. Um, so, um, people are generally logical thinkers, but, well, mm, I think that's debatable. Uh, we won't go into the, like, the female um, aspect of that here. And uh, generally, people will follow procedures if they're written down. But we've got these, uh, we have to interface with other things, and it's generally here we've got control desks and panels. Well, um, they've got to be quite clear and logically laid out, easy to read, easy to recognise a pattern, and colour coded. Uh, and there's got to be a low risk of a uh, mistake in the operation of them. Okay, so everybody uh, okay with that? God, we're about halfway through this. Okay, uh, again, VDU screens and alarm windows. Well, you generally, uh, on your uh, screen, you would have a uh, an overall plan overview, I would say. Uh, you've got to have a hierarchy of displays for uh, leading to details of the plant status, so you should be able to zoom in to certain areas. Uh, you use an alarm sequence and prioritisation and be able to su suppress unwanted alarms. And audible alarms should be um, easily distinguishable, but not for shocking. Okay, I didn't really know what the word jarring meant, so I think it means shock. Ergonomics, then. What is ergonomics? Plant ergonomics. Well, it's a study of workplace design and impact on the workers. 
It's the fit between people, activities, equipment and systems. And this seems to be a really big deal nowadays. Um, where they're continually... I don't know if they actually do it at, this, at the, the college, but uh, when I used to work in industry, they were continually asking me about the height of my chair relative to my desk, and whether I had a foot rest, and what height my VDU screen was, and all this sort of stuff. And um, I can see how that could be really important, because for 20 years I've been sitting at a desk with the wrong height of chair, and uh, it's playing havoc now with my back. So uh, it may sound a bit trivial, but it's probably quite worthwhile doing. Because I uh, can't sue anybody now. Well, I can't anyway, because it's all too long ago. And half the places are shut and changed their name. But, uh, so uh, people tend to sue people now. And also your productivity is down if you're not uh, uh, comfortable. Anthrop. On metric, it means measurement of humans. It's talking about uh, the aspects of human variation, whether you're uh, short or tall, short arms, if you're fat or thin. And it's uh, about varying different body size and proportions of individuals belonging to different populations. Now, when they mean populations, I don't think they mean like the population of the UK or something. It's uh, different, I would say, different types of uh, people where you're tall or short or whatever. Okay. Right. Um, instrumentation then, well, it's got to be informative, clear and easy to read, unambiguous hopefully, and well, this is kind of the, the obvious, it must measure the intended parameter. I don't know why you wouldn't want to measure the intended parameter, why would you want to measure something else? And uh, you must be able to measure critical functions. Okay. Okay, so then we're going to talk about mental or cognitive overload here. It just means uh, you're getting too much information and here he's giving you a uh, an example of a Boeing 747, a jumbo jet, and uh, you can look at that if you like. Uh, that's just as uh, an example of uh, overload, mental overload. And of course, as we all know, because we're all students or work in colleges, uh, too much information can be difficult to process. It generally makes you tired, i.e. me, and uh, you can be, get confused when you get too tired. So uh, it still remains a problem. It's, it seems to be especially in aircraft, but I'm sure uh, I know at uh, Moss Morning Fife at the ethylene plant, uh, that's, they've got quite a lot of uh, processes, shall we say, to control. And uh, I had a bit go at one, one of their simulators when I was a kid. And it was uh, extremely difficult for me uh, to be able to do anything because I didn't really. There, there, was, there was too much information. There was just too much information. But um, I'm sure if you did it every day, you'd get used to it. So. Okay, so uh, emergency procedures then. Well, you need them. Um, you need procedures for everything. You need them for normal operation, emergency operation. Uh, shut down, start up, whatever it is. So that's kind of obvious. Right, uh, this slide 15, I think this has already been discussed in slide, uh, in previous slides. So uh, I think we've kind of talked about that. Uh, information systems then, well, people like to see things that they're familiar with. Picture paints a thousand words, so they say it's usually better than text. Uh, it's good to be able to, prior, uh, to prioritize uh, information. And there's also like there's mental def defaults that seem to be sort of bred in you know, like for example, red's danger, green's okay, north is at the top, twelve o'clock's at the top, six is at the bottom. 
So these, uh, it's good to have these things uh, if you're uh, if you have an information system to pass on info to other people, have something that they're familiar with. And then there's the old cliche, who needs to know basis, the need to know basis. So if you don't need to know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Right. So, uh, physical issues then, well, okay, if you've got um, rotating machines or any type of machines in the workshop, you need guards and interlocks and health and safety at work acts, maintenance floor will take care of that. Um, you've got to be quite um, careful because people are different sizes and shapes and you don't want to have uh, heavy things up too high or too low. You want to be, have them kind of round about this sort of waist height. There's people that might be working that have physical disabilities and there's, uh, well, there's standards but not many, which are a bit vague, especially on vibration. Uh, noise, heat, humidity, lighting. Well, Leighton, you should know all about these standards, mate, in your project. Mm. Heating and lighting, humidity. Uh, floor grip, I didn't know about that. But there's very, very little on uh, vibration. Because people, uh, a lot of people have vibration right fingers, and I'm one of them. So, uh, nobody seems to really care about us. So. And working hours versus the need for concentration, physical effort, standards. I believe that's quite uh, important in your coursework. If you're doing the um, Texas oil refinery one. Okay, so there's, there's standards around for that. You can maybe have a wee look. I don't know. Oh, okay. And uh, finally... Reporting, it's really important to, uh, well, it's really important to report incidents, equipment failures and near misses. Because a near miss this time might not be a near miss the next time. And there has to be procedures for uh, reporting and disseminating the knowledge to others. This is probably quite important as well in the Texas Oil Refinery uh, coursework. And it's also uh, good to be able to Im for implement and knowledge into updated procedures. And the bottom one, or the very last thing we're going to talk about, is lessons learned. Okay, so um, if you get something wrong and you don't tell anybody, then everybody else can get it wrong. But if you get it wrong and make a note of it or tell people, then time is saved and you're more efficient the next time. So. There we go. So I think that was a really nice short um, day for, well, I don't even know what that is. Internet access addresses, right, okay, yeah. I think once for ice cream, I'm not sure. Um, well, I think that was a very nice short uh, presentation. I wish they were all like that, rather than having me trying to squeeze them in in the last two or three minutes. So uh, do you have any uh, uh, questions? No, it's pretty straightforward. I like this. I think you should be taking this class. Because it's all <laughs> straightforward. I think you should do that. Um, no, are you doing the Texas oil refinery? Or no, the I'm, doing the, I'm doing the Dreamliners. Dreamliner. Right, okay. Well, some of the comments I made there were very specific to the Texas oil refinery because I had, a, I had a quick look at that just before uh, we came in because one of uh, your colleagues down here was asking me about it. But... Uh, you know, um, I've not had a look at the Dreamliner uh, one, so I don't know. But anyway, if you have any, any questions at all, um, you know, you just get in contact. Eh? Don't just sit there and bang your head off the, the desk or whatever it is. I want everybody to pass me. I want an easy life. Oh, this marking, tick, 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 I love it. You know? So well, I'll, here's all... I'll do my best. <laughs> Good man. Where, where's all your colleagues today? Um... Tommy is uh, he's only he had to work so he, he's only arriving later today. All right, okay. He commutes from Inverness. All right, oh, does he? Aye. That's a, what did he, does he come out in a car? 
No, he, he takes the train, stays up for a couple of days, and then he heads back home again. All right, okay, good. Well, that's a fair, uh, that's a fair hike, that. Aye. It's about, it's about uh, what, 200 miles, is it? As much as that? Aye, it's not as much as that. 100 miles, but you're about four hours on train. Yeah, yeah. No, because I've driven it a few times on my motorbike, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite arduous, shall we say. Yeah, so. Right, so uh, just keep chipping away at it. Uh, I'm not, you'll have a free week next week because I'm not around. So what I would like you to do is um, uh, to have a look at uh, week 8. So that's all the stuff in week 8 and there, there seems to be some uh, tutorials and tutorial answers. So if you try and have a wee go at the... Um, at the tutorials and see how you get on. Okay. All right. Because um, I think we're kind of doing okay. I think. Uh, well, what is it? There's, there's. It says here there's four weeks teaching left. So that should take us to about. I think we'll maybe finish about a week early. Which is fine. I think. You know. Um, See your exams on the, what was it again? The 10th. The 10th. Is it the 10th? The 10th. So, well, you'll, if, if, if you could go over the fault tree analysis stuff and try and uh, have a go at some of the tutorials here, if you could go over that the week I come back. Uh, so that should be the 1st of November, I think. Is it 1st? I can't remember. No, is it? I have no idea. Yeah. I don't even know what day it is. Um, <laughs> But I think we should, we've got um, four weeks, I think, after I come back. Um, or maybe five. I don't know. But I'm sure we're, we're going to be just fine for a time. Uh, let me see. So I'll, I'll come back on the 31st. So we've got... Uh, we'll be back the uh, So we've got... Let me see. Got one, uh, two, three, four, five. So you've got about six. We've got about six weeks left after I come back. So we've, there's, you know, we've got time for revision and uh, group huddles and stuff like that. Okay. Fine. Ah, everybody happy. Okay. So there's a nice wee short one for you. Well, uh, I'll see you in a fortnight then. That'll be perfect. Aye. Okay. Fine. Right, we'll see you then then. Bye then. Okay. Cheers. Bye.